I think of aquatic invasive species as a form of pollution. It's harmful to the environment and it's harmful to our economy and human health. It is a very complex issue because we're not just talking about critters in a bucket of water. There's lots of talk about the Asian carp moving into Lake Michigan, but this is not a new story. It's just the next chapter in the century-long biological plunder on the Great Lakes. The Great Lakes Environmental Research Laboratory reports more than 180 aquatic plants and animals that shouldn't be here. Species like Phragmites, the Asian water milfoil, the spiny water flea, and a fish-killing virus called VHS. We have zero examples of eradication, actually, of aquatic invasive species in the Great Lakes, and we can control precisely two. Those two species under control, the alewife and the sea lamprey. We've spent many decades fighting the lamprey as it destroyed most of the native lake trout. What we had was a decay, really, of the whole um, fabric of the Great Lakes uh, fishery, largely because of the sea lamprey. Lampreys and alewives came through man-made canals from the Atlantic Ocean. The alewives thrived because there weren't enough lake trout to eat them. The 1960s brought the great alewife die-offs, tens of millions of rotting fish washing ashore. The effects on tourism were obvious. By the 1980s, the zebra mussels appeared, hitching a ride in the big ships. The zebra mussel is a small mollusk that came in um, through ballast water, originated in Eurasia. They attach to hard surfaces, clogging pipes and crowding out native plants and animals. Zebra mussels and quagga mussels. Problematic? Yes. What are we going to do to get rid of them? Probably there is not a realistic strategy to do that. Laws are in place concerning ballast water, but they differ in each Great Lakes state. Critics say they're not strict enough. Among the stowaways expected soon, killer shrimp. Killer shrimp shred their prey, so they will attack something larger than themselves, shred it, and eat it. They are highly likely to become established in the Great Lakes, and if they become established in the Great Lakes, are highly likely to cause significant problems. Beyond the ballast water, there's another way invasive species get into the Great Lakes. Beware the northern snakehead, also called fishzilla or frankenfish. There are already infestations on the east coast. Those didn't come out of aquaculture and they didn't come out of ships and they didn't, you know, I mean it was, Johnny got tired of his pet snakehead in his, in his aquarium and he threw it out in the lake. It can breathe air and walk on land. Nobody wants to tell little Johnny he can't have fish, but um, you know, that particular industry is, is wide open, very unregulated. Federal laws have been proposed restricting the importation of species dangerous to the Great Lakes, but don't expect anything to come out of Congress anytime soon. It comes down to personal responsibility. People, in, individuals have to make a decision that they're going to do the right thing. You going to do the right thing? Yes or no?